As human beings, it's pretty normal to abandon things we don't want anymore. We abandon clothes, cars, jewelry, usually when it's outlived its usefulness and we want to trade up. Somehow, knowing this fact did not reduce the shock I felt when I found out there is an abandoned $80 million glass mansion sitting in front of a lake in Branson, Missouri. This abandoned mansion is called the Evergreen Crystal Palace. It's fully furnished and I mean from top to bottom. Plus, it was abandoned with everything left inside. How did this happen? Who abandoned this mansion? And for goodness sake, what sort of super mansion did they abandon it for? Let's find out together. Welcome back to our channel. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. Let's start off with the fact that the Evergreen Crystal Palace is a splendid bit of architecture. 30,000 square feet, 20 plus car garage, 11 bedrooms. I mean, that $80 million had to go somewhere. But to really appreciate this fine structure, we need to look a bit into its past and why it was abandoned. The Evergreen Crystal Palace was built in the early 90s by a man named Robert Plaster. Robert Plaster was a multimillionaire. He made his enormous wealth from founding his own gas company in 1963 called Empire Gas, which, well, lived up to its name and soon he was sitting on a veritable gas empire turning it into one of the largest gas distributors in the United States. He sold Empire Gas in 1996 and established Evergreen Investments. This was also around the time the Evergreen Crystal Palace was built. The more astute listeners among you might have noticed a subtle naming pattern here. Well, that was no coincidence, as the Crystal Palace also doubled as an office for Robert Plaster. Funny enough, the Evergreen Crystal Palace was never intended to be a massive glass mansion or to be used as an office. It was originally planned to be a family lake house. But after an allegedly unfavorable remake was made to Mr. Plaster by a stockbroker, he decided to build an Evergreen superstructure instead. So if the words get flexed on was a building, it would be the Evergreen. Now that we know the reasons behind the construction of the Evergreen, let's see how those $80 million was put to work and explore its 30,000 square feet of sheer architectural brilliance. Even though the Evergreen was abandoned after the death of Robert Plaster, its furnishings and decorations were never removed, so quite a lot of what's inside was left in there since the 90s. So naturally, our first stop on this tour will be the garage. When the Evergreen was built, it was done with the intent of holding multiple visitors at a time, so it needed a garage capable of doing just that. So understandably, the structure was built with a large garage capable of fitting 20-plus cars in it. And although the garage was abandoned, unfortunately, there aren't any abandoned cars in there for anyone to test drive. And even if there were, I would strongly advise against it, as the garage, much like the rest of the mansion, is hooked up with plenty of cameras. Speaking of which, let's talk a bit about the security of this mansion. It was abandoned with millions of dollars worth of property in it after all. How come it hasn't been looted dry? Well, for one, the Evergreen is in a very secluded location in Branson West, Missouri. And like every mansion and every murder mystery movie, there's only one road in and one road out. Unless you count helicopters. Although, that's not to say it's not safe. Back in the day, it had its own security on the ground, and it still does till today. It might have undergone a bit of vandalism in the past, but it's been cleaned up since then. Security has been tightened, and the power is hooked up. With the sheer amount of security cameras littered throughout the premises and alarms primed to inform the sheriff of any suspicious activity, the Evergreen Palace isn't the kind of abandoned building you want to try squatting inside. In fact, it's currently for sale. So check those couch cushions and don't forget the glove box. You just might be able to snag this bad boy. Now it's time for the main attraction. We can't talk about the Evergreen without talking about its rooms. Robert Plaster built 11 of them for a reason, and those are just the bedrooms. Walking into the Evergreen feels a lot like walking into a hotel. The kind of hotel that makes you worried your credit card is going to get declined. The first thing you'd notice is the amazing view you get from inside the building. It is a lakeside property after all, and much of the Evergreen surface area is glass. So just walking into the building is enough to be hit by nature's awe. And that's just the first room you walk into. So what do you get when you want to go to sleep? Well, the Evergreen isn't satisfied with giving you the same types of bedrooms over and over, so it opts to give you themed bedrooms instead. One of these bedrooms is called Peacock. And to both our disappointment, I'm sure there isn't a single Peacock in sight. Just an extravagantly furnished room with a king-sized bed, an amazing view from its glass walls, and a balcony to stare into nature's splendor. You know, nothing special. Another of these bedrooms is called Chinatown. This room has a massive kimono pinned to the wall, very 90s. 
This room is also exquisitely furnished and designed and has a bathroom made out of glass bricks. I mean, it isn't called the Glass Mansion for nothing. And don't forget that balcony because that nature isn't going to enjoy itself. Another bedroom in the Evergreen is called Presidential. Now, this room lives up to its name. It's quite a bit bigger than the two rooms I already mentioned, exquisitely furnished, lovely glass walls with equally amazing views, and that's not all. It has a bathroom, a small office, and a dressing room. The last bedroom we'll be looking at is the Wild West. This room is the most themed out of all the other rooms. It has a vintage feel to it with a pale yellowish tint to everything in the room, as well as several statues and paintings of horses. This room has a bathroom, a study space, and a king-sized bed, but disappointingly, no outhouse. However, it does make up for it with a view that simply can't be topped. All the different rooms are connected by long hallways and elevators ferrying you from one floor to the other, really tricking you into thinking the Evergreen is just your standard, incredibly fancy hotel, but believe me, it's not. However, the Evergreen does have an entire bar area decked out with marble imported from China, said to be the only place on earth with that marble pattern as well as a dedicated dining area with double-sided fireplace. Now, I'm aware this doesn't help me to prove this building wasn't secretly intended to be used as a hotel. Well, if that doesn't convince you, then this will. Inside the Evergreen Crystal Palace is a gun range. I'm talking bulletproof glass, targets, gun posters, gun manuals, and noise-canceling headsets. It turns out Robert Plaster was quite into guns. I don't think many hotels would take the risk of building a gun range inside the building. And at the top of all this is the main office, stationed on the third floor, also known as the top floor. It's a rather spacious room, seemingly doubling as an office and a bedroom. And much like the other rooms, it's exquisitely furnished, sporting a quad fireplace and one of the best views in the entire building. There are ancient computers, CCTV, and monitors to keep an eye on the mansion. Honestly, these are just some of the interesting rooms and features in this mansion. It's just that massive and densely packed. I didn't even get to how many pianos there are in this mansion. I mean, there are two in the main office alone. But in the end, even though the Evergreen was abandoned for over 10 years after the death of Robert Plaster in 2008, recently it has seen quite the rejuvenation. Some areas might require a cleanup here and there, and some things may be rusted, but the Evergreen is sticking to its name and staying strong as time marches on. Would you like to live in an $80 million glass mansion? What if it meant living there all by yourself? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like. You can check out the King Luxury channel for more videos all about luxury. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.